Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my presentation. Uh, I'm Sai Kishore. The title of my paper is Eliciting Pairwise Preferences in Recommender Systems. Okay, to get started, uh, most of the recommender systems uh, use user preferences for items expressed in the form of absolute evaluations, for example, uh, user ratings or uh, item clicks. But however, uh, previous uh, literature has shown that such type of absolute evaluations have few limitations. Uh, for instance, if most of the user-rated items are five star, then it's difficult to understand which item the user likes most. So in this work, we focused on uh, pairwise preferences as an alternative way to understand and model user preferences and compute recommendations. So what exactly is a pairwise preference here is that for a given pair of uh, items, the user express which item uh, he prefers and to what extent eventually. You can see from the example that uh, a user are presented with two movies and the user try to compare them by moving the slider to the preferred uh, movie. And we have uh, here the case that yeah, we have a use, uh, matrix with a user and item pair, and we have a missing comparison, and the core problem here is to predict this uh, missing comparison and aggregate the available and the predicted ones to compute a personalized ranking. So uh, in a previous research, we have actually built model to predict these missing comparisons, and in an offline evaluation, we have uh, shown that they have a better uh, performance. But in this work, we try to understand when and how to elicit, uh, elicit pairwise preferences. Uh, in particular, we are looking at uh, understanding uh, when eliciting pairwise preferences is uh, meaningful and beneficial. So we, in order to understand the effectiveness of uh, eliciting pairwise preferences, we focused on specific uh, user scenarios, such as like when a user has a clear uh, objective and is looking for a specific type of uh, recommendations, we try to understand the effectiveness of uh, eliciting pairwise preferences. So uh, for example, here the case would be like a user wants to enjoy a beach resort with his family on a weekend. So we consider such focused situations here. So we have the following uh, research hypothesis. The one, the pairwise preferences can lead to a larger system usability. And the second one says that the usage of pairwise preferences can lead to a larger user satisfaction when the choice set is already, has been already reduced. And then finally, uh, pairwise preferences can lead to a higher recommendation accuracy when compared to uh, ratings, when there is a clear objective. Uh, so as I said, like in everyday life, we actually do not rate uh, the alternatives. So we directly or indirectly uh, compare the available options. For instance, which movie you want to watch, or for example, for the Texas karaoke, if you want to find a best place, you actually look uh, the best options, available options, and indirectly compare them and pick the best, pick the best options. So in order to test our hypothesis, uh, we have used uh, a, a mobile app called Citroll Suggest, which, suggests, uh, which, recommend, which is a context-aware recommender system, which will suggest uh, uh, a poise in the Citroll area. It's already available on the Google Play Store. If you want to have a look, you can look at it. Uh, we, using this app, we developed uh, two variants. The first one is the rating variant, STSR, which uses only ratings. The second one is STSRC, uh, which uses both ratings and the comparisons. And using these systems, we have performed an online A-B testing to uh, validate our research hypothesis. Well, uh, preference illustration requires a suitable uh, interface. Or that is a picture where we actually developed and used in our experiments. So users are presented with uh, pairs, and the user can pick which option or which restaurant he wants to uh, visit. So in order to present the item pairs, uh, what we have done is that we propose each user to uh, compare uh, an item with other items that are recommended and also top predicted. So just in a plain words to understand that, imagine that you have a ranked list. And then for each item in the ranked list, you try to identify an item which is similar and also top predicted in the ranked list. So we calculate a score for each item pair using this particular formula. And then we pick the top item and present to the users in the order it appeared in the ranked list. And for the baseline system, we have a binary prediction, which is uh, uh, kind of try to identify the items which the most usually like to rate. So the, 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 our variant kind of dif, uh, uh, differs from the baseline just with an active learning strategy, an additional graphical interface, and a recommendation technology. So in order to predict the missing comparison, uh, we, have, we have used a user-based nearest neighbor technique. I'm not going to go into details about the algorithm here. 
So uh, we have a user profiles with pairwise preferences, and uh, we have a similarity metric called Goldman and Kruskal Gamma, which try to use for both profiles, it kind of checks the number of agreements and disagreements happened, and using these two uh, numbers, it kind of calculates a score between user, user similarities. And, uh, and as I said, like we predict the missing comparisons, then we need to aggregate them to get a personalized ranking. So what we do is that for each item, we try to average uh, the prediction happen against the rest of the items, and we kind of average and give a score. And using this score, we rank and present to the users the ranked list. So this is our uh, experiment uh, setup. We have two phases. The first phase is without any goal, a general phase. And the second phase, we have a specific goal. And there are a couple of steps here. The first, and then the users enter, depending upon the system, enter ratings or uh, comparisons. And just to dif differ from the phase one and phase two, in the phase two, there is a specific goal, because we wanted to understand the effectiveness of eliciting pairwise preferences when there is a specific goal. And uh, at the end of each phase, users have filled up uh, the questionnaire. And uh, using these questionnaires, we calculated an overall score from 0 to 100. Higher the score, the better the system performance. So now discussing about the usability there, so uh, you can see that the comparison variant has a better score compared to rating variant. Uh, this supports our uh, first research hypothesis. And the second one that we looked at in the phase two when there is a already a clear objective and the choice set is already reduced, we can see that, the, again, the comparison variant has a better performance uh, compared to rating variant. And finally, we also looked at the number of preferences entered in the both phases. Uh, we can see that uh, at both the phases, the users entered more pairwise preferences compared to ratings. And uh, moving on to now uh, the recommendation quality. Uh, as I said, like the, the difference between the phase one and the phase two, that there is a specific goal in the phase two. Uh, here, you can see that the rating variant uh, in phase one and phase two uh, did not have a similar performance. There is no significant uh, difference. Uh, whereas in phase two, uh, for the comparison variant, uh, when there is no uh, special or specific objective, it doesn't perform well. But as soon as you have a spe specific goal and looking for a specific type of recommendation, it performs better significantly, improves over 12%. Uh, so overall, this, re uh, this supports our uh, third research hypothesis. And overall, our results show that pairwise preferences are useful in situations and scenarios where, where the user has a specific goal and looking for a specific type of recommendations. And uh, finally, we also try to see that if there exists any dependency between uh, the user personality and the perceived uh, system uh, usability and the perceived system usability and the user satisfaction for the preferential station. So each user, when registered to any of our variant, actually filled a personality questionnaire to assess the big five personality trait. So here, to understand the dependency, what we have done is that we have considered both the systems separately. And for each system, we actually categorized users into a low personality trait and high personality trait. So we observed that uh, high extroverts tend to use rating-based systems uh, more than the users who possess low extroversion. And the second point is that uh, high agreeable users uh, use pairwise preference elicitation. And they gave higher score and like to use uh, preference elicitation more compared to uh, users who have low agreeableness. And to uh, summarize and conclude that we have conducted an online A-B testing, and we have shown that when the user is searching for a specific type of recommendations, system, uh, recommended system with pairwise preferences can perform better or equally when compared to rating-based system. And as a future work, there are many research directions to explore. Uh, the first one is that uh, we have just considered as a one single focused example here, but there are many such examples exist in a user interaction with the system. For instance, if a user has consumed uh, uh, a recommended item, then it might be useful to understand if, if asking the user to compare with the previously experienced item or asking the user to rate the consumed item. And the second one is a mixed active learning strategy, uh, where so far in the recommendations uh, literature uh, focused on uh, for rating based, I mean, active learning for the rating elicitation, but this work can also uh, start a new type of research where you need to elicit both type of uh, preferences, mixed elicitation, both ratings and pairwise preferences. And uh, as this also finally can be observed that uh, 
the pairwise preferences which are provided in when there is a specific goal can be used for a short term. So once the goal changes, the, might, the preferences might also change. Uh, they can also be used and explored in terms of session-based recommendations. And that concludes my presentation. Any questions? Thank you. Are there any questions um, on here? Part? Oh. Hi. Hi. Uh, good talk. Um, I'm wondering how do you decide, uh, I, I may have missed this, but how do you decide which items to present as a pair? And, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that you want to, as you said in the beginning of your talk, to present items with, with a high rating uh, as a pair, but those can also be, like, there, there's many of them, right? So I'm wondering if there's a specific strategy that will work better, as in maybe two items that are very similar to each other that are both highly rated, or two items that are very different from each other, items that are universally well-liked, or items that are a little more on the controversial side, like how would you decide on, on, on which items to choose to compare? So, uh, well, uh, when, actually if you look at, if you want two items to be comparable, they need to be somewhat similar. Mm -hmm. So we actually looked at a few specific uh, requirements here. So we wanted to have both items similar because we are within a specific type of category. We don't have a different type of category. And we also wanted to get maximum information back, so that's the reason we also looked at top recommended items. And there should be an active learning strategy to identify the best space, and we had a specific active learning strategy designed for our system. So, uh, yeah, so it could be another point to also look in that, like different strategies might give different pairs of items and some testing and some future work needed to identify the best strategy required for presenting the pairs. And I would imagine that it's possible that what is best for the system might not be the most exciting or interesting for the users. So that, yeah, that the, the users are free to skip it, so you might not need to give it so you have like presented with like few pairs and the user might I mean, skip that and go to the next one. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Hi, my name is Rohit from University of Utah. I really like your talk. Thank you. So one question I have is that how do you handle transitivity violations? Because in the uh, initial one of the figures you show, one is better than two, two is better than three, but uh, humans are not logical. Uh, you mean being. cycles? Yeah, so like if uh, I rate one to be better than two, two to be better than three, but then I rate three yeah. to be better than one. So actually what we do is that we predict for a given pair uh, which item is preferred, we actually do not look into the cycles. So given a score for each item against the remaining items. We try to average those scores to give a score, so we don't look into the cycle, so irrespective of what cycles you have. This might be also considered as a future work, because if you have a cycle, you generally consider the items in the cycle as one item. You can also consider the items which are present in the cycle as one item, and then remaining as the rest of the thing, and you can find what is, to what extent the other items are preferred. So it's overall how you calculate the score and uh, rank them. So in our case, we do not take into account these things. We just see how, to what extent an item is preferred to other item, and then we kind of average these scores to give a score and then rank it. Thank you. Okay, hello, this is Joe from Delft University of Technology. And my question is about your basic assumption in your first page. Uh, I'd like to know whether your assumption that uh, there are a lot of identical ratings uh, in your data set, for example, in MovieLens or Amazon Review data sets, there are a lot of fours and fives, but this is a problem, has a matter to do with your scaling system. Uh, if it's from one to five, then this scaling system has a lot of identical ratings, but if you have a um, scaling system, for example, from one to 100, the granularity is really really detailed, and in this way, do you think your model can still stand? Thanks. Uh, sorry, I did not follow the question, but you meant uh, the, the... I mean that if uh, you are using a scaling system from one to five, then yes. th it's yeah. natural that there are a lot of fours and fives. But if you are using a scaling system, which is really detailed, from, for example, from one to 100, then in this way, the comparison 
pairwise can be rather easier, maybe without your model. So I'd like to know whether your model can be generalized under this situation. So well, it also depends upon what you find from a scale from 1 to 100 as a relevant. So we generally take 4 and 5. For example, if you take uh, above 70 as a relevant one, so you might find a lot of items which are relevant, then you have the same problem again here. OK. Yes, thanks. I wanted to ask also, um, so there is a work in, you know, with the ratings as a feedback that if you ask user twice to rate the same item, um, there is it could change yeah. the rating. So it, there is some kind of error rate. Did you look at that? Like, is it better or worse? And can you compare those yeah, two? Yeah, so there are few research works which have done that. Uh, the same work when you have to re-rate, the comparisons are more stable than the ratings. Almost like 95% they are stable when it compares to ratings. Thank you so much. Is there another question? I guess not. Okay, let's thank the speaker.